Hello, my name is Gabe, and today I'm going to show you how to view a Trinet IP camera over the internet. All internet or IP cameras have a built-in server. This means that you can access them from any internet connection and that they work even when your computer is off. The problem for most of you out there is that your internet service provider does not assign you a fixed IP address. Having a dynamic IP service means that every time you access the internet from your home, you're doing so with a different IP address that is assigned to you by your ISP or internet service provider. This is a problem. So imagine if you mailed a parcel to a friend, but every day your friend's mailing address changed. The concept is the same for your IP camera. You need a fixed IP address in order to view your internet camera. Luckily, this problem is easy to fix. So let's go over the big picture. First, I'm assuming that your internet camera is already set up and connected to a wireless router. We will use Trinet's TVIP110W connected to one of the most popular routers, the TEW652BRP. I'm also assuming that your wireless router is already set up and is connected to the internet. As mentioned, almost all internet service providers constantly change your IP address, which makes connecting to your internet camera impossible since you don't know your IP address from one day to the next or one hour to the next. To get around this, you will need to sign up to a service that provides a constant link to ever-changing dynamic IP addresses. There are a bunch of great free services out there, so you don't have to worry about monthly fees. I will show you a service as a fortune teller, since it will always know your ever-changing IP address in real time. Once you have signed up for the service, called Dynamic DNS Service, you will then need to change a few IP camera settings. And finally, you will change your settings on your router so that your router will automatically link to your Dynamic DNS Service. Once all the steps have been completed, you will be able to view your IP camera from any internet connection. I will walk you through all the steps and at the end I'll show you how to connect free SecureView software and Trendnet's TVM7 to your IP cameras over the internet. First, we need to sign up for a dynamic DNS service. To do that, simply perform a web search for the term free dynamic DNS. This will produce a long list of free and paid service providers that will create a virtual fixed IP address for you we do not recommend one service over another. For demonstration purposes only, we will sign up for the service provided by DynDNS.com. That is spelled D-Y-N-D-N-S.com. The first step is to choose an account name. The name can be any available that you choose. I have inputted Trendnet for Life as the account name. Then we'll choose a DynDNS.org as the domain name. Once DynDNS confirms that the account is available, you will be guided through the registration process. Be sure to write down your username and password. You will need this information when changing router settings. Registration should only take a few minutes and that's it. You now have a dynamic DNS service that will be able to maintain a constant connection with your changing IP address. Now it's time to log into the SecureView wireless internet camera, model TVIP110W, to make a few quick modifications. I'm assuming that the camera is already set up. We've logged in and now we click on Setup. Next, we click on the Network tab and the Network sub tab. Within the IP settings section, we will click on Static IP. This will change and connect the camera to the port that we open on the router in the next step. Write the IP address down. You will need to enter this information when configuring the router. If you have multiple cameras, the last two digits of your IP address need to change in order to give each camera its own unique IP address. So your first camera's last two digits would be 30. Your second would be .31, and so on. Below the IP settings section, you will see a DDNS settings section. You will leave DDNS settings blank. This area is only used if you connect this IP camera directly to a modem without the use of a router. We will then change the port number section to port 81. Its default is 80, and changing it to 81 eliminates any potential conflict with other network devices. Write down port 81 as well. You will need this in the next step. Additional cameras need to have their own unique port number, so camera 2 would be assigned port 82. Camera 3 would be assigned port 83, and so on. Hit apply, and we're done. The IP camera is now pointed toward port 81 on a router. So now, we will open that port on the router. Think of opening the port as provided through a portal, which you can see the IP camera from your DDNS service. We will log into the router. 
Remember, I'm assuming that your router is already set up. If you're not sure how to log into your router, pause this video, take a look at the user's manual. So, we've logged into the router. Under the Access button, we click on Virtual Server. Here, we click Enable. Then we will name a new Virtual Server profile. For simplicity, we're entering the name of the camera, TVIP110W, to this Virtual Server profile. We set the protocol to TCP, and we set the private and public port to 81. Write this number down. You will need it for the next step. Next, we enter the static IP address of our camera that we wrote down. Now you click Add, and you have to set up through a portal, which you will be able to see the IP camera. If you have multiple cameras, repeat this procedure. However, remember you have to assign a different IP address and port number for each additional camera. Now that the TVIP110W and the TW652BRP are linked up, it's time to connect our router to our DDNS service. We're still logged into the router. Under the main tab, click on the very convenient Dynamic DNS sub-tab. Here you enable DDNS, then choose dindns.org for the server address. For the host name, we enter trendnet4life.dns.org. During the registration process, we set up the username as trendnet 4 life so we will enter that into the username field. We also created a password, so we will enter dindns password that we wrote down. Hit apply, and now the router is automatically connected to your dynamic DNS, or DDNS service. Keep in mind that all TrendNet wireless end routers have a dynamic DNS subtap. I have shown you the process for TrendNet's TW652BRP. The process to set up DDNS for other TrendNet wireless end routers is identical. Now our IP camera is streaming.